don't give a damn how you do it. Do it. Weep on his neck. Hold his hand. Go to bed with him. Just remember, Reuben Kaiser gets what he wants, OK? <laughs> Turn it on, Sheila. Not the sound. Do I hear $50,000? $50,000? Gentlemen, may I remind you this is a unique specimen. $50,000, Senor Tiziani. $55,000, Mr. Halster. $60,000, Herr Langford. $60,000. $65,000, Senor Tiziani. Grazie, Tonto, Senor. $70,000, Herr Langford. Any advance on $70,000? $70,000 for the first time, $70,000 for the second, $75,000. I'm sorry, sir, I don't know your name. Bidding for Mr. Reuben Kaiser of London. 75,000 to Mr. Kaiser of London. 75,000. Third best gentlemen, Senor Tiziani Finito, Herr Langford, Senor Galamos. Do I hear 80? Anyone? 75,000 once, 75,000 twice. Sold to Mr. Kaiser of London for 75,000 dollars. Turn it off, Sheila. Yes, Mr. Kaiser. Mark, the recording beat you by about five minutes. Yeah, it took the next flight. I'd seen both the films on TWA. Yeah. Joke. Yeah. 75,000. What's that in real money? 31,000 pounds. Oh. We paid in Gilda. Why is that? We were holding them in Chicago against Dutch revaluation. I saved you 8% uh, on the gross price. Yeah. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. Well, I am. Don't I see it? An awful lot of bread for an inch of sticky paper. Mm. Sold for one cent in 1856, and now for 30 odd thousand pounds. Uh, that's what I call beating inflation. <laughs> nice. Yes. There you are, you can keep your fan mail in there. Now, Crabtree Consolidated, I've spoken to, um... Why? Couldn't afford not to. Couldn't afford not to? You just lost 30,000 pounds. No. I've just made 20,000. Uh, I don't understand. Well, one minute ago, there were two British Guiana one-cent blacks. Now there's only one. Can you imagine what that's done to the value of the other one? And of course, you own it. Who else? <laughs> Give me a clue. Right. More to it than meets the eye. Do you give up? Yes. A contact lens. Oh, very good. Yes, I like that. One of yours? I'm sorry. I always was unobservant. They said so at police college. A friend's. Oh, oh forget it. She probably drank it anyway. Oh. Anyone I know? Lucy Aspin. Oh, Juicy Lucy. You know? Yeah. With a small K. Poor Gran, I promise I won't tell you so. I went to her wedding. Which one? The one where they put LSD in the loving cup. We got two paddy wagons full of guests. I got the groom and the best man in one pair of cuffs. I've often thought that should have been put in the Guinness Book of Records. Gran, I've told you she's not there anymore. Really? Who's her friend? Ah. Ah, coffee. Even allowing for the fact that your boss is in Finisterre, you... How did you know that? You told me. Oh. It's a strange place to have a bagpipe festival. 
It's a strange instrument. And even allowing for that, you are taking things pretty leisurely, aren't you? I have come to consult the Oracle. Well, Delphi's one floor down. Yeah, and she's far too busy giving French lessons. The thing is, we've been given a tip-off. Ah, a cough. You do say... Yes, yes, we do. This is more of a clearing of the throat than a full-blown cough. An informer, good one, telephone operator, foreign services... Yes, I've heard it before. Mr. Cradley, Mr. Cradley, Sir Jules Ainsy, Ainsy, Ugh! Very good. Well, we know, no, we think, that whatever it is, is going to be pulled on Thursday evening. What will? Whatever it is. Oh, well, go on. That's what I want you to do. What? Go on. I want you to help me pin it down. Pin what down? The job. Fill me in as to when it's going to happen. Or how, or why, or who. <laughs> You're joking. No. You mean 445 Lloyd's Bank, Lower Sloan Street, a ginger-headed man with a 30 20 nylon mask and a left-footed limp? Well, <laughs> perhaps not quite so explicit as that. Of course I can't. Nothing? Nothing. No pointers? No. You really do have some strange ideas about astrology. Have you done your column for Thursday? Of course. May I have a peep? Well, feel free. It won't help. Uh, just, but... just a look. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. Biases? And how. No wonder he's swimming in both directions at once. Not the easiest of days. Problems affecting home or domestic life could occur. Even known and trusted friends could be unreliable. Yes, I like that. Even your best friend wouldn't tell you, but they'd stick a knife in your throat. Be wary about signing any form of agreement or contract. Rape on the HP. Tally Clark goes berserk. <laughs> we had a boss once, you know. You could never say berserk. Always berserk. We used to run a sweepstake to see if you could make him say it first. Take care when travelling. Rather unusual on the northern line. Difficulties could arise in the evening hours. Yes, I like it, I like it. A Piscean victim, definitely. Look, it's all pretty general. Oh, you wrote it. Well, it has to be. It applies to a twelfth of the population. Could affect hundreds of different sorts of people in hundreds of different sorts of mm. ways. All in all, it looks like a pretty fair day for the rest of us. Agreed. Well, what do you think? Well, I think with about 800,000 Piocenes in London and less than 20,000 policemen, I think you should all be kept pretty busy. Yes. And a new moon. Now, that's good, isn't it? It's marvellous. There's two beautiful aspects to Neptune and Jupiter, so it should be a great day. Especially for launching new enterprises. Oh, all right. Bring him home on Wednesday. Have some champagne. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, no calls. We're lunch in 15 minutes. One lobster thermidor, and I'll have the Quinnells. Yeah. Here's to Joseph Herbert. Huh. Didn't even know your wife was pregnant. Well, when it's your second family, you're a bit more modest about it. No longer seems the cleverest thing in the world. Do you know, I thought I'd seen the end of Beatrix Potter, Winnie the Pooh, Wind in the Willows. Try the little prince. Don't know him. I'll send you a copy. Thanks very much. How big was he? He was 57 centimetres long. Circumference of his head was 37 centimetres. He weighed 3,770-something, what would it be, grams? <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm still struggling with inches and yeah, pounds. Just about eight pounds. It's a big baby. Quite. Well, now, look, what have you got for me? Now, just the headlines, mind you. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. Oh, here it is. Well, you know, you have to be careful with babies' horoscopes. There's a danger that they can become too much of a blueprint. I don't follow. Well, a horoscope has to be fitted to a life, not a life to a horoscope. I'll take your point. Now, the sun was in Gemini and the sign on the ascendant was Aries. Incidentally, the moon was in Virgo. So, he should be a sensitive child and he'll need a lot of affection. Oh, there shouldn't be any shortage of that. And he'll give a lot. That would be very refreshing. Now, uh, Mercury rules Gemini and Mercury being the ruler of the mind. So, he should be a bright child. Not too much conflict at home. Oh, even more refreshing. On the other hand, Aries and his ascendant will make him very strong-willed. Well, he shouldn't... Yes, he should be lucky, financially speaking. Well, I hope he won't have to be. <laughs> Can't imagine so. Probably live abroad for some of his life. Won't marry early, not till he's 30. Wise man. But it should be a long and lasting marriage, and a happy one. And so say all of us.
Yeah. Mr. Sutton? Yeah. Detective Inspector Gradley, CID. Oh, let me come inside. Yeah. Actually, I, uh, I think we met before, sir. Hmm? I was with F Division before I got my gold watch. Hammersmith? That's right. Peppy the cat burglar. You got it, sir. Oh. I've got him ten years, room. That's right. <laughs> nice to see you again, sir. Yeah. Yeah, would you like to go through? Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, this is my wife, Paula. Paula, this is Inspector Gradley. Gradley. Mrs. Sutton? Yeah. Do sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. Now, <clears throat> I understand something's the matter. Oh, yes, sir. It's our Cathy. Lovely kid, never a bit of bother in all the years that no, we've been looking Just after. slow down, eh? Now, who's Cathy? My niece, sir. My kid sister's daughter. Uh, we brought her up, sir, in the last ten years. Yeah, Bert, my kid sister, April's husband, he was killed down the docks. Sorry, commercials. Left with five kids under eight. Of course, we, uh, we decided to help out. Mm. Well, so far, so good. So you took Cathy in, and now, ten years later, what's happened? That's it, sir. We don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? Well, well she's, uh, she's disappeared, sir. Just vanished. When was this? A couple of nights ago. Has her mother heard from her? She passed on last year. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, sir. Um, did Cathy take her things with her? Not a stitch. Money? No, sir. Savings books in her dressing table drawer. Hmm. How about friends? <laughs> she hasn't got many, has she, love? Well, she's a quietish girl, keeps to herself. What does she do? She's still at school? No, no sir. She's 19, sir. Works in a bookshop up on the open. Mm. Mad about books. Always sniffing round the sale room, second-hand stalls. Like a little library, a bedroom. Has she given any signs of restlessness? Any change of personality? Hmm? Any new friends? Change in her dress habits or makeup, hairstyle? Hmm? No, same as ever. She left the shop at 20 to 6. And well, then... I went round to see her next morning. Nobody's seen her since. I see. Why have you waited two days? We spent the time talking over what we should do. I uh, don't want you to think I'll panic, sir, but. Oh, no, no, I quite understand. <laughs> I think I do the same under the circumstances. Mrs. Sutton, I don't know whether your husband's told you, but this is a pretty common story. That's exactly what I told her, sir. I mean, hundreds of teenage girls, for no apparent reason, up and leave home. Twenty-five a day that we know of suddenly take up roots. That's 9,000 a year. That's only the tip of the iceberg. I'm, I'm sorry you've been troubled, actually, sir, but the wife got a bit. Have you, um, have you a photograph? Oh, yes, I've got some recent ones. Well, look, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll take one down to the local Nick, give them the gen, and then we'll see what happens from there, all right? Well, we'll go and get the inspector a photo. I'll get it right away. Right. Sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, actually, sir, I uh, tell the truth, I didn't want to bother myself. Oh, it's no bother. Well, you know what women are, and of course it's worse when she's not your own flesh and blood. Mm. You, you feel, you know, you've got to take extra care, sir. Are you working, or...? Uh... Uh, night watchman, sir. It eats out the pension. I'd rather be back on the force. After all you've said? How do you know what I've said, sir? <laughs> Haven't we all? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go back to shaking the old door knobs over as soon as you like. <laughs> no. Thank you. Hmm. What do you want to bring that out for? No, I want the inspector to see it. What is it? This is what tells me she's not gone under her own steam. The inspector's a busy man. He's got no time for all that rubbish. It's old. I appreciate that. It's only a book. It's not. It's the one thing she's really proud of. Published in 1911. It's the first edition of the first book that D.H. Lawrence ever had published. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. But... She'd never have gone without taking that. The White Peacock. You know something, Mrs. Sutton? I think you may well be right. So, if the moon was in a male section of the zodiac like Aries... Thank you. ...the baby would be born male, and if in Taurus, female, and so it, on. It worked? Mm, with 8,000 women. Where? British Ha. <laughs> I thought so. Well, what does that mean? It's like all these things. Well, what things? Why is it always in Bratislava? Never Barnsley or Barnstable or Birmingham. Well, does it matter? Of course it matters. There's an awful lot of liars in Bratislava. How do you know? Oh, it's a fact. Well known. <laughs> I expect there's an awful lot of liars in Barnsley. No. It's like these 170-year-old men in Kathmandu. Full head of hair, active sex life, wall-to-wall -wall teeth. Well, why not? Because I like evidence, right? Concrete evidence. Evidence. Mm. Black and white, Somerset House. Sherpa Stan Smith, born 10 to 8, Kathmandu, April the 9th, 1804. Mother Flo, Father Alf. We tell the truth, the rest of the world tells lies. Oh, funny. It's exactly my experience. <laughs> Just 
just imagine queuing up for your pension every week for 110 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't that funny. No. I was just thinking the Queen would spend her whole life queuing up at the telegram counter. <laughs> Is that just for show? Oh, of course not. Oh. Oh. Pour the wine, would you, Neville? Very well, madam. This is Mr. Gradley. He's a police officer. Sir. Fine, thank you. Have I, madam's permission to clear? Sir? To follow a little soul in white wine sauce with mussels and mushrooms. Sounds delightful. I love these German wines. That was Neville. Neville? The butler. Fine. Oh, spoiled sport. He's the Thompson's butler. You know the Thompson's. Okay, he's the Thompson's butler. Why isn't he butling at the Thompson's? They're on a holiday in the Aegean. He hasn't had the mumps and they had to leave him somewhere. Aren't there places you can leave butlers? A repository for butlers? Kennels, perhaps? Look, they thought if he didn't have a nice home to go to, they'd lose him. <laughs> they should be so lucky. What's it got to do with mumps? Well, the people the Thompson's are travelling with have two infectious children. <laughs> You'll never get rid of him, you know. They'll never collect him. I know I wouldn't. Oh, he's lovely, Grad. He's so helpful. He's dying to polish some silver. You haven't got any, have you? Little bridge work on the back on the left here. Don't be mean. A butler. <laughs> you realise that he'll be snooping on everything we say or do. You see? I'm whispering already. You mean you want to do something that shouldn't be snooped on? Yes. I want to eat the fish with my fingers. I want to paddle in my wine. Paddle? Paddle! Paul, or do you want a hand? Oh, thank you very much, love. Put it down. I'll give you a hand when I finish painting this poop. Poop. Oh, there you are. 21p you owe me. Mm. Give me a coupon. Yeah. Would you tell the milkman? Don't tell him anything. I don't think he's been yet. In your note, silly. What note? The one outside in the bottle. I didn't leave any note. What's this then? What is it, George? Oh, God. It? It's from Kathy. Kathy? She's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? That's what she says. All right, Miss Jones. Now, I need a new secretary. Now, uh, it's a mad existence, but of course, you know that. Now, assuming that all the other requirements are right, words per minute, etc., under what sign should I be looking for compatibility? You're an Aquarian. 
Correct. Aquarius is an air sign, so forget the other air signs, Libra and Gemini. You need someone more solid and dependable. Oh, not too solid. We're only talking about character, nothing else. I think a Taurus or a Virgo. Really? Oh, excuse me. Huh? Oh, yes, put it through. Uh, it's my wife. I shan't be second. Hello, darling. How's the waters? Huh? Last night? No, no, no. I went down to the mill. Yes, fine. Everything's fine. Yes, how's the weather? Excellent. Uh, darling, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I'll call you tonight. Here. Yeah. And to you. Bye. Now, you were saying, Taurus or a Virgo? Which is it? Well, either would do. You're the creative one ruled by Uranus, so this way you should be able to pass the hard graft and the slog onto them. How did Taurus react to me? That's a good question. Although Taurians are easygoing, they often can be stubborn. Aquarians are unpredictable, so there might be a clash. But I think it'd be worth taking the risk. And a Virgo? Well, they're a precise, dependable sort of people. She might be in for a shock or two, but it'd probably do her good. I think she might enjoy it. So, either would fit the bill. Oh, morning, Esther. Oh, fine, thank you. Uh, do you mind if I talk to Mark for a second? No, do you want me to? No, don't be silly. Uh, Mark, you've read Agnew's letter. Yeah. What do you think? Well, he's kosher. There's no bull about him. You can't kid him and he won't kid you. If it's no go, he says so and he means it. Mm. So what if I tell him Kane's in? Can we talk about this later? No. OK. Well, I think we're beyond that now. Oh. Impulsive aquarium. Old-fashioned as boots. Yes, well, we had to do it when we started. Go to A, tell him we've got B. Run to the mortgage company, tell him we've got tenants. Go to the tenants, say we've got a mortgage. Oh, you think it's all a bit in for a dig? Yes, I do. Barrow boy rather than Harrow boy. Exactly. You're right. So you're not going to do it? I didn't say that. I just said you were right. Yes? It's for you. Glad? I'm working. What? Whereabouts? Yes, I'll come straight away. When did she disappear? Thursday evening, miss. Could this have been your Thursday evening tip-off? Oh, it's possible. I thought it was something bigger, larger scale. When's Kathy's birthday, Mr Sutton? Birthday, miss? Yes. Well, it's a damn funny time to be talking about birthdays. I mean, the girl's been kidnapped. There is a reason. Well, well, it's March the 11th, same as Arrow Wilson's. Pisces, remember? Of course. Did Cathy usually wear this? Yes, she was very fond of it. It belonged to her mother. Give it to her. Not here. Why not? It won't work. Why? Well, try. Look, it's not something you can just turn on to order. Try. Sorry. Nothing? Nothing. Huh. Oh, well. It's back to criminal records and fingerprints, etc., etc. Approximately. Uh, just an approximate figure. I mean, oh. taller than Mrs. Sutton? Shorter? I'd say about the same, wouldn't you, George? Yeah, about the same. How tall are you, Mrs. Sutton? How tall am I, George? Well, you must know, love, I don't. Well, just an approximate figure. I mean, would you say five foot five? Yeah, go on then. Oh. Sounds a bit tall to me. I think it's nearer five four. Five four. Five four it is. Now build. Thin, medium, plump. Medium. 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 Complexion. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, fair, sallow, pale. Well, she looks pale in the photograph. Pale. Pale? Pale. Pale. Do you know something? I'd say more thin than medium. Would you? She was always on a diet. Yeah, that's true. Lived on yogurts. Not that there was any need. 
We'll say thin, then. Yeah, go on, then. Mind you, I mean... It, look, it's, it's just a rough guide. That slight is a better word. Yeah, that'd be better. Put slightly built. Slightly built. Mind you, I'd say her complexion was more fresh than pale, wouldn't you? Well... Joan Housewife, that's who we're after. Little woman who sweats over a hot stove. And swipes snotty noses. Now, I assume you'll deliver and I'll act accordingly. Yep. What you got there, a hot one? Beat it. <laughs> Must be spring. What? I've just heard the first cuckoo. You think it's a gag? It has to be. I'm not sure. Oh, so some girl gets herself kidnapped, which I do not believe. If it were true, what's it to me? Well, I can't answer that. Well, I can, nothing. So let's get on, shall we? Just going to ignore it. Just. This uh, straight-line depreciation. There's a picture of the girl. No, it's not. It's a picture of a girl, a girl I've never seen, a girl I don't know. Not my problem. Are you going to inform the police? Have you ever spoken to the police? Yes. It's a very long, drawn-out process, like playing slow-motion ping-pong. It's ten minutes of our time. Maybe fifty years of hers. Now, you're losing your marbles, Mark. Welfare, that's where you should be. Give me the police, will you? Yes, the police! Her name's Cathy. She's single, 19, and she lives with her aunt and her uncle. He's an ex-Bobby. Why me, Inspector? Not off the top. Because you're wealthy, I suppose. I may have read your name in the newspaper. Was well, there any reason why I should fork out £100,000? No, no reason at all. You see, he agrees with me. I didn't say that you should. Oh, come on, Mark. I said you just couldn't ignore it. All right, I haven't ignored it. Now what? Look, it's some sort of crank, isn't it? Could be. Has to be. She could be dead by now, right? It's possible. You can't just assume that she's dead. Of course not. Now, what you decide to do, Inspector, do you want a beer? Not at the moment. Well, what you decide is your own affair. I don't see how it affects us. Do you, Mark? We're paying the ransom help? No, don't answer that. Who's going to pay the ransom? Are you? It's a hypothetical question. If she's alive... I don't want to hear. If she is alive, and we believe she is, then obviously it would help. If she's dead, it might help catch the kidnapper. I'm glad you said might. One might, two ifs, and a fistful of maybes, and you expect me to throw £100,000 on the table. God, if I did that, we'd be creating a new get-rich-quick industry. Asset stripping for beginners. Young girls and millionaires wouldn't be safe on the streets. Yes. That's true. I tell you one thing, Inspector. Every time a hijacker, a kidnapper, or any other thug gets paid off, it makes it easier for the next one. It's hard, though, if you're the first to say no. Inspector, I love being first. That's the name of my game. It wouldn't matter, sir, if a young girl died because you didn't cough up. If a young girl dies, Inspector, it means the police, i.e. you, weren't smart enough to find her. I'm jolly glad he's not my landlord, I tell you. Our kidnapper may not know it, but he's barking up the wrong tree with our Mr. K. You think so? Huh. Deep pockets and short arms. So you don't think he'll pay up? Not a hope. Look, he could have built houses and flats, but did he? No. Office blocks. It's people like him you should blame next time you read about the shortage of train drivers and bus conductors. Well, not that I know him that well, but I think you could be wrong. Just think? Or are your bunions twitching? Slight twitch. I'll get it, Neville. Very good, madam. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, dear. I know it's late. I wanted to be early, but I got three changes of buses. Won't you come in? Sit down. Thank you. I like your pictures. I like a lot of pictures. Brightens the place up. I grew up with a boyhood of rally at the foot of the bed and hope over my head. Sounds delightful. Sorry I missed you. Miss me? I'm Mrs. Sutton, Cathy's aunt. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise. George, tell me later. Yes, I think you were lying down. Migraine. I haven't had a wink of sleep since Cathy disappeared. Well, would you like a drink? Oh, no. Thank you. A cup of tea, then? Oh, that'd be nice. If it's no trouble. Of course it's not. And for you, madam? Yes, please, Neville. Thank you. You're Sybil, aren't you? I mean, you write the Sybil piece in the newspaper. Yes, I do. I never miss it. Thank you. But everybody tells you that. Not at all. Some people laugh, others tell me how good the columns are in the other newspapers. Oh. I think it's ever so accurate, really is. Kath is a Pisces. I bet you don't remember what you wrote the day she disappeared. No, I can't. What, what did I say? Take care when travelling. Something... I don't remember the exact words. Something dodgy may happen in the evening. And that's just how it happened as she was coming home from work. You think so? What I wanted to say was... Oh, I've got an awful nerve. <laughs> Don't be so silly. Oh, I'm asking too much. Of course you're not. Oh, you must be very busy. The column is the most important thing I do, honestly. Do you think you could help find her? How? Well, I don't know. Couldn't you go into a trance or something and see where she is? <sighs> Mrs Sutton, I'm an astrologer, not a spiritualist or a medium. Oh. Well, I, I know there's a difference. But I thought... I just thought... See, I'm starting to get a bit frightened. Mark, read this kidnapping. I've decided. See if you can get it in Saturday's personal column. Say I'm ready to pay. Robert's found this in the front seat of the rose. My name is Cathy Selby, Mr. Kaiser. Thank you for your generosity. You'll never know how grateful I am. I'm instructed to tell you to have £100,000 in bearer bonds Lodged with your Geneva office by Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Any tricks and I shall be killed. I'm sorry to cause you so much... No more? No. Oh, what do you think? Well, my first reaction is that it's someone who knows you. Well, how'd you make that out? Well, they know you have a Geneva office. Well, I should hope so. We spent 30,000 publicising the fact at the end of last year. Mm. Bearer bonds. Now, that's pretty sophisticated, isn't it? No, nah, not these days. Uh, the financial sections in the three posh Sundays. This is the age of Bernie Kornfeld. Liquid real estates, mutual funds, bond washing. No, nothing very clever about that. Oh, we didn't think we were dealing with an idiot. No, never. Do you think that is the girl's voice? We'll check. How are you going to play it? Straight. I shall send somebody to Geneva. Mark Braun, probably. He doesn't want to go, but I'll talk him into it. Come to that, I'll tell him. He'll just have to sit it out then till he's contacted. Right. Uh, if you don't mind. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I must say, I, uh, I appreciate your change of heart. Do you think it's changed? Well, I assume so. Not at all. You know, I suddenly realised the adverse publicity. The story that Reuben Kaiser refused to save a girl's life. 
I mean, who'd want to be associated with us after all that? No, it's just business, Inspector. Good business. I'm grateful, nonetheless. Yes, I... Yeah, well, no... But... But, sir... Sir, listen, if only you... Yes, I know. Sir, look, even a condemned man... Yes! I'm sorry, sir. I, 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 I beg your pardon. I apologise. No. Permission to speak, sir. Thank you. Now, you ask what I've done. One, I've been in touch with all known contacts. Nothing. Not a word. Two, I've had a tail put on the owner of the shop and also around-the-clock surveillance on the Suttons. Well, in case they started behaving strangely, sir. Selling off the girl clothes, anything like that. Three, we've run a make on all known extortioners. Four, we've run a house-to-house, -house, not only round the shop, but also on the usual route the girl takes home. Five... N n no, I've done four, sir. Yeah, that was the house-to-house. -house. Five, I've had a, a policewoman recreate with an identical dress the route home. Yes, sir. Six, we've, as you know, run the girl's photo, not only in the national press, but also on television. Yes. We've also even run it in the, the, the shops around in the district. Well, whatever else, sir, you can't say that I've been sitting on my duff. And a very good day to you too, sir. Hope your geraniums die. Do you want anything? I'd love some more coffee. Black? Blacker. You know, Neptune was transiting the natal Uranus in the area of Cathy's chart. What does that mean? Well, something unexpected and mysterious. Hmm. Do you know what the commander just said? Oh, gradually, you're not going to talk, are you? Who said Kaiser wouldn't pay up? Well, you know him better than I do. Excuses. That's what I said to Kaiser. What? The kidnapper knows him. Knows him personally. Go on. Well, there'd be no sense in blackmailing a real hard nose unless you knew he had a soft interior beneath the shell. His wife's just had a baby. Yes, you know that, but... It was in all the newspapers. Was it? it wasn't on the sports page. Neville, Miss Jones would like another coffee, if that's possible. Of course. I suppose you did notice the Continental Seven, the stroke through the upright. Yes, I did. Thank you for mentioning it. And then, uh, Neville. Sir? Did, uh, did anything else strike you? In the old days, when I was in big service, Responsible for a household of maids, footmen, belly, etc. One had to be able to read a lot into a letter. Many's the set of forged references I have seen. May I? Oh, please. <clears throat> no scrawl, no crossings out, no smudges. Uh, Neville, Neville. Sir? Uh, <clears throat> Looks like the work of a planner, a careful man. Systematic, precise, clean. Well educated, would you say? Oh, definitely. Sort of person I'd expect to be. Neatly dressed, clean shaven, on time, punctilious. The actual printing is on the small side. Perhaps <laughs> one mustn't get too fanciful. Oh, uh, live dangerously. I was only going to say that it's my experience that a small hand usually indicates a small nature. I remember a valley when I was with the Delderfields. Minute writing, very petty man. Couldn't enjoy himself if you paid him. Give it a rest, love. Nearly finished. You've done it every day this week. So what's it looking nice?
Of course, there's no aristocracy anymore. Just mm. one vast rag trade. Mm. Butler today is no more than a status symbol. Yes, once you've got the roles, his and hers, <laughs> what next? Exactly. <clears throat> Unless you're careful, you'll find yourself working at the most unseemly places. Mm. I can imagine. <clears throat> Breakfast used to begin with grace. <laughs> now it begins with the scramble for the Financial <laughs> Times. Grace less. Pardon? You said it used to begin with grace. I said gr it doesn't realize, like sir, that in the 30s there were a million and a half people in service. As many as that. My, uh, my grandfather used to keep a butler. Really? Mm. More brandy, sir? Oh, thank you. You wouldn't remember the name, is it? Oh, now you're asking me. It's a long time ago. <laughs> Randall? Rentham? Renham? Renham? Not Renting. Renting, that's it. Do you know? Not personally. Knew of the family, the Rentings of Rougeley. <laughs> <sighs> it's in the blood, you know, buckling. Mm. I don't mean this modern habit of shoving some alien into a monkey jacket or hiring one for the night from Harrods. No, I'm talking about the great tradition. I'm a butler. My father was a butler. My mother was a housemaid, her mother before her. Grandfather? Gamekeeper. The same family there. Tragedy, that was. What happened? Shot. Oh, Great War. Glorious Twelfth. A blast from his employer's twelve bore. Mm. Left barrel. In pursuit of Lagopus Scoticus. Lagopus Watticus? Scoticus. Grouse, sir. Mm. Grad? Oh, excuse me. More coffee, sir? Oh, thank you. You called, madam? I've finished. What, already? Just about. Oh, well done. Here. Ooh, that's marvellous. It's a Neptunian affair. Something fishy? Ooh, reeks of it. It's riddled with deceit, a double cross, a bad aspect to Mars. Ow! Oh, sorry. Restrictions, hidden enemies, it's all there. Mm, sounds promising. Mm. With Mars triggering off the episode to Pisces in the area of Cathy's chart, I'd say she's being held near water. And the aspect of the mid-heaven seems to indicate somewhere in the south of England. South of England? Mm. Near water. The Thames? Mm, fresh water. Oh, definitely not the Thames. Maps, where do you keep your atlas? Oh, up there. Up there. Now, look. Here we are. Yes, fresh water. Reservoirs, rivers, canals. Now, listen, I'll read them out and see if any of them give good vibes. Ooh, I've never felt less psychic in my life. Ready? Sunbury Reservoir. Oh. Walton Reservoir. Stanwell? River Ooze, Aaron, the Medway. Desperation stakes. See if any of these mean anything to you. Water. Serum, lymph, room, diluent. Well, if they do, it's in a foreign language, not one I understand. Mm, ditto. High water, flood, spring tide, wet, water, moisten, dilute. Oh, it's useless. South of England, fresh water. Look, this is going to go on forever, you know. Can you imagine all those rock pools in Surbiton being fished by plastic gnomes? Look, it shouldn't be that difficult. <sighs> Instruments for pulverisation. Oh, talking of pulverisation. The commander's gone back to calling me Inspector. Is that bad? Yeah, well, last weekend it was Gradley. What's the next wrong, Dan? Yeah, you. You're only as good as your last arrest, you know. <laughs> I got my own back on him once, though. I took the lid off his humidor. Ruined 30 quid's worth of cigars. Pestle and mortar. Nutmeg grater, grinder, grater, millstone, mill, abrasion, contusion, granulation. Mill! Yes? Yes! 
Eureka, yes? Eureka! Hidden enemies, deceit, it's all there. I said so, it's a Neptunian affair. Well, what next? Get me the phone. The phone, the phone. That's right. Water. Mill water. Water drives the mill. Oh, the shut mill... up, Grad. Shut up, Grad. Neville? Neville! Ah. Oh. Yes, madam? Neville, where do you go to get the waters? The what, madam? The waters, man. Waters. You know, the cure-type waters. A drop of it. If you insist to. Harrogate, Leamington Spa. No, abroad. Abroad. Abroad? You said... <sighs> no, no. Different waters. Oh, Baden, Baden. Pardon? Baden. Ille bar. The purest waters in France, of course, is Le Touquet. Vichy, that's the mildest of the bottled waters. And I said Wardian Casino at Vichy, ate in whole golf course, very slow greens. Look, is any of these places near Switzerland? <laughs> no, not really. Every eye is. Nice, unassuming little spa. Bit fun to see. Whereabouts? It's on Lac Lamar, otherwise known as Lake Geneva. Hmm. You hear that, Grand? Geneva! I heard. And where are the Barabons to go? Geneva! Amazing. Will that be all, madam? Yes, that will be all. Thank you very much indeed, Neville. <laughs> Forget the inspector. This time tomorrow, he'll be calling you Grad. I might just ignore him. Hello? Yeah. He's on his way out. Good. Well, before we tie this up, inspector, I'd like to say one thing. I think you've done a damn fine job of work on this. Oh, that's very good of you to say, sir. Well, police got their fair share of brickbats. Uh, well, the buck has to stop somewhere. <laughs> you must have burnt a lot of midnight oil. Well, now that you mentioned it, uh, I must say I am a bit... We are a bit pooped, aren't we, Esther? Morning. Morning. Morning, Miss Jones. Morning. Inspector. You got your ticket for Geneva? Yeah, Swiss Air. My bag's downstairs. Right. Before you go, Mr. Braun. Oh, Mark, please. Mark, I think I found you the perfect secretary. Oh, really? Mm. Miss Selby. Kathy. Mark Braun, it's my duty to inform you. How? Why is what I'd like to know. I'll second that. You wouldn't understand. Try me. I'd had a bellyful. All the double crossing, the sharp practice, the lying, the cheating. For what? So that you could burn another postage stamp? Not for me. I wanted to get out. Before you were thrown out? Yes, that too. Oh, you knew I was replacing you? Oh, you were the brains. I was the brawn. It was said often enough. You know, you could have resigned. I'd have given you a golden handshake. No, no, that wouldn't do. I wanted to do one deal. Just one deal on my own. A Kaiser-type deal. Something I'd look back on. Smile over. Well, you'd have plenty of time to look back on it where you're going. I still don't understand how. Well, we... That is, I, uh... <clears throat> the mills may grind slowly, but they grind exceeding small. Mark Braun, I should inform you that you're not obliged to say anything, unless I wish to. You. Th that is... <clears throat> Come along. <clears throat> Neville? Neville? I'm out here, Grad. Ah. Where's Neville? Look at this. Memoirs of an infantry officer. Oh, that's very good. I read it years ago. It's a thank you present from Kathy Selby. Oh, how nice. Oh, it's the first edition. Collector's piece. I didn't know you were up on books. Oh, yes. Regular book in East. Where's Neville? He's gone. I want to borrow him for two... What do you mean, gone? Well, he suddenly remembered something. What? He's had the mumps. Mumps, yes. Measles, no. I put him on a plane to Athens this morning. Oh, well. Back to Inspector again. The Commander? Yes. I offered to lend him Neville for Tuesday night. He's entertaining the head of the Surete. Well, perhaps I'll do. Ah, and that's really sweet of you. I appreciate it. But I'm afraid you... I don't know, though. Candlelight dinner? My second best evening dress? How tall are you? Yes. Yes.